We still haven't figured out the garbage situation. Most mornings we wake up to somebody having left one of our bags of garbage back on our back patio. He was up with a bad stomach ache all night. Obviously, because that's a one-way street there. Oh. <laughs> You're trying not to hit the guy with the little... Yeah, we'd rather hit a curb kid. That's my defense right there. Hello, we are Ben, Rebecca, and Lucy. And this is our truck, Denny. For the past five years, we've been working towards the dream of driving around the world, and it's finally coming true. Welcome to our series of videos as we drive across America to the East Coast, prepare Denny for roll-on, roll-off shipping, drop him off at the Port of Baltimore, catch a flight to Italy, check into an Airbnb for a couple weeks, rent a camper van to drive to Belgium, wait out a week of shipping delays at a hotel in Brussels. Finally, we get reunited with Denny at the port of Zabrugi. Now, welcome to our journey. Good morning from Italy. This is actually our last day in our Airbnb here in Castelletto Sopro Tocino. And yes, I know I butchered the name, but hey, at least I said it. Um, yeah, we haven't been recording a ton. We took a few days to kind of rest up and recover. And then we've done a lot of work to catch up on the things that we didn't really take care of while we were getting ready to come over here, as well as repairing the truck. But before we leave here, we really wanted to show you where we've been staying, what we've been doing, a few funny quirks about the place. And of course, we're gonna take you with us to Belgium because later today we pick up our van that will, it's a camper van, so it's a place to sleep, a car to drive, and a place to cook food because otherwise, if you break all of those apart, it was way more expensive and a lot more complicated, especially during COVID to uh, do those separately. So we're gonna go pick up our van today and uh, pack it up and get ready to head north. Good morning, Lucia. Have you already had some breakfast and been out to potty? Have you enjoyed staying here? Yeah, it's a fun place to play with your ball and we've gone for lots of walks. We go for a big walk every day and then there's a park down at the end of the street where she can go play as well. The other things we have are hot water maker, an inversion blender. There's an induction stovetop over there, which we never really used. Big screen television with cable TV. And this is where we kept all of Lucy's supplies. And she just has little travel bowls with her today. And this is something else kind of interesting. These are all of our recyclables, but we haven't been able to find large bottles of water here yet. So you get like a six pack of one liter bottles of water. It's different. We're hoping to find a solution for that. So this is the kitchen and we've got our little fridge right here, which has been wonderful it has a really good freezer in it and um then you see our two burner stove here some storage on the top a little bit of food up there glasses and cups down there over here is our dishes uh, some spices and the silverware something that has been really interesting for us in the process of staying here is the garbage situation <laughs> Now I'm here to tell you that all of this is part of the garbage situation. <laughs> so let me break it down for you. Yellow bags have meaning to them. They are for plastic, uh, like plastic bottles, but not just plastic bottles like we do in the States. We're talking everything plastic that you take out, take off of, you know, your whatever everything plastic then you separate out your papers so like stuff off of the paper towel and toilet paper rolls all of your paper towels all of your packaging that comes is often paper then over here 
Compost. Anything that is uh, compostable, degradable. And then down here we have an everything else bin. Stuff that doesn't go anywhere else. And then you saw over here we have our glass bottles, plastic bottles. And if we had any tin or metals, they would be uh, in a separate place as well. So, quite complicated. Uh, it's been a real challenge because we have a place out back to take the garbage. And when we first got here, we thought we were doing a pretty good job of the recycling thing. Then I started getting text messages from our host. You have to recycle the garbage. I am. Apparently not well enough because most mornings we wake up to somebody having left one of our bags of garbage back on our back patio. Trash cans are all out there behind the green. The garbage men actually go through and sift through the garbage and they leave stuff that doesn't fit in the bag, in the container that you put it in. And then one of our friendly neighbors brings it back to our back porch because, well, they know we're foreigners. <laughs> it had to be us. We've been here 21 days tomorrow. We still haven't figured out the garbage situation. I even read a website. I figured out the different color bag issues, which we just really weren't interested in buying a package of yellow bags, bags and a package of blue bags and a package of green bags. So we've been recycling our little bags that we get all of our produce in at the grocery store. And you see, we made a hook system in here, but we're still just not getting the hang of it. So maybe someday someone will explain to us what we've done wrong. But my one bit of advice to our Airbnb host is going to be to leave some instructions for the next guest. So this is what our living room slash dining room area looks like. Tile floors, really cute painted walls, little Ikea table and a fold out bed. Uh, so if you have extra guests, they can sleep there. We stored our big duffels underneath it. This is our little heater. It's a space heater, oil filled, works fabulously. It keeps us nice and cozy warm. We've really enjoyed it because we use the same kind of heat at home in Alaska. This is our bathroom. Hopefully it's pretty clean. I cleaned it yesterday. So typical sink, mirror, which is kind of funny because I can't see myself in the mirror. <laughs> so I have one somewhere else. Some storage. This is a very tiny shower. I actually have a bruise on my forehead because the other day I leaned over and smacked my forehead on this. On a positive note, it makes our shower in the truck seem extremely spacious because you can actually bend over in our shower and not hit your head on the wall. This is our messy bedroom. I normally wouldn't show it to you without the bed made, but someone had kind of a rough night. And that's why it's only Becky doing videos this morning because he's not feeling so hot. He was up with a bad stomach ache all night. So, did you want to say anything? I was up with a bad stomach ache all night. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> so this is our charging station. We have a converter that we brought from home, so it adapts it has, you know, a plug-in, all different sorts of plug-in options to plug into international power outlets. And then um, this converts 220 to 110 for us, and it has three plug-ins on the top and then four USB outlets. Honestly, when it's running, it sounds like a little refrigerator. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Uh, we've been setting Ben's computer up here and we have a little DVD player so we can watch some movies. All of the TV here is in Italian. I can't even find BBC. So we've been watching some cooking shows to kind of learn the language and have something to do. But otherwise we've been watching our movies. 
This is what our storage cabinets look like. Lucy has a collection of toys that have to go to the OR and be repaired, but plenty of space. We've got place to hang up all of our clothes and fold and this is the mirror I actually use so I can see myself. Are you nervous? You're following me everywhere I go, huh? Say sit down so I can sit on your feet, mama. That's what I really want to do. You being such a good puppy, huh? I'm feeling better. Not sure what happened. Kinda woke up in the middle of the night and got that feeling like I was really hungry. Of course, we only had like two meals yesterday, but uh, took some omeprazole and caraphate and back in business. Beautiful day out here. This is the street in the neighborhood. Uh, it's a Sunday. There's a lot of uh, folks here. I'm kind of gathering that this is a little bit of a vacation community. Uh, the park and the lake are right down there. Sporting a new hat. Trying to get my Euro vibe going. I don't even know if this is a Euro style hat, but it looked pretty good and I, I was due for a change. So right now we are waiting for our host. They have been so kind to us. Uh, they went grocery shopping for us because we had to do the whole COVID mandate and uh, quarantine here for five days. They went grocery shopping for us and stocked us up on groceries. We obviously paid for them, so we didn't have to leave the house. Uh, they've like dropped off a barbecue and uh, now they're going to run us over to the uh, van rental agency. But this has been a wonderful place to stay. While we're waiting for Mariano, I thought I'd bring you down here to the little private park for the community. It's been a great place. Lucy enjoys it. We'll come out here and sit, but we've been walking all up and down the streets of this little community. Uh, there's sailboats. Wow, there's a lot of sailboats on the water today. And it's been raining, so the Alps are starting to get a nice dusting of snow off in the distance. But really, I think this is called the Lake District, but it is absolutely gorgeous here. Rebecca touched on this a little bit, but I wanted to show you the trash situation because <laughs> genuinely we can't do anything right here. And some of them are cut and dry. You don't need to be a rocket scientist to see plastic. And then this is one of the confusing ones. What actually qualifies as non-recyclable? Paper and cardboard, duh, Captain Obvious. Tins, small metal object. This is the other confusing one, Umido. I uh, typed in to translate and that means humid. I see like green stuff in there, like uh, veggie scraps. And then glass, obviously that one's pretty easy. But between the bags and maybe the color of the bag, it is just so complicated. We want to recycle. We want to do it right. We don't want to be seeing trash bags show up on our back porch. But just nobody has ever explained to us what we're doing wrong. Glass, metal, plastic, cardboard. That's easy. But the other two, who the hell knows at this point? These films are produced with your support, the Outliers YouTube community. Click join on our channel for early video releases, exclusive content, increased engagement, and so much more. Okay, here it is. Our home on wheels for four nights, even though we're gonna go back to our Airbnb for one more night because we had an errand to run in the morning. But this is it, Fiat chassis. It's a uh, class B. Looks like it's from uh, Germany. And yeah, it's pretty nice. Definitely not our expedition vehicle, but it'll definitely do the job. Uh, the bunks back there look a little bit uh, fixed in regards to uh, not being able to uh, kind of take them down. So it looks like we're, even though there's just two of us, we're gonna have to deal with having two beds, a little storage there. We learned that it's illegal to drive with propane on. So propane has to be disconnected when driving here. This is it.
Will this work? <laughs> this will be fine. This will do the job. Yeah. It's not Denny. No, but that's okay. Yep. Denny's coming. And we're really lucky that uh, we're getting to check in because they sent him a message saying we weren't coming today and he is almost to leave. Wow. <laughs> so, Lots of confusion at times when uh, this is our life now. The I'm just... I this is our life, honey. I need extra sleep and extra time reading to recover from it all because <laughs> of that. It'll be so nice once we get into Denny and like have that base level of our home. Yes. Yep. Thank you. We have that dialed in and it'll just be figuring out all the rules of the road from there. <laughs> Stick shift, the gears are in different positions. <laughs> but do you know what's funny here? Hmm. That infamous six gear that I'm always searching for on Demi. You Demi, have one. This has six gears. <laughs> you don't know how many times that, you know, I'll just be going along like, oh, no, still no six gear. Mm -hmm. Okay, God, keep us safe. Don't let us kill ourselves on foreign roads in a foreign car. It's one thing in Denny, we are more familiar with it. This is a little more nerve wracking. Oh, this ride's smooth. This is our life now, baby. I know. Okay. At the roundabout, you're gonna go that way. What do you think of your ride, Lucy? She's got her seat belt on and her own seat back there. I'm not sure she's gonna love sitting that far away from us this whole trip. Uh, she's not that much of a choice though. Well, my thought was I might have to go sit back there with her a little what? bit. Oh, she's a big girl. Okay, I might not want to sit away from her for that long. If you're wondering why Ben said that Lucia might not have a choice about sitting in the back, uh, it's actually the law in a lot of EU countries for the dogs to be seat belted in too. And I don't know which ones for sure, but definitely France, which we're going to be driving pretty much like the entire length of France, north, south to north. And uh, they're required to be seat belted in the vehicle, so. Well, fortunately she's used to being yeah. seat belted in because we've done that ever since the- She was born. Yeah, ever since she would fit into Shelby's old harness. Yep. And even then before that, we- We had, had a little one for yeah, her. Yeah, it was like plastic buckles, so it wasn't like an official solid seat safety seat belt. But we just got her used to yeah. it. It's like being in the uh, little carrying case. She's just been dialed into that From the for, uh, her entire life with us. Do you remember back in the day before all this computer-aided navigation, how challenging it was? <laughs> and it's challenging now it still. Was, yeah. Wow, this is a cute little This is really cute. Village area. Yeah, <laughs> tiny little streets. My mom would remember way better than me coming to Europe before the advent of technology. But in the early 2000s, we really, we didn't have, yeah, we didn't you have cell out. phones that worked internationally. So um, you always were really reliant on your navigator. Yeah. Yep. I never, I never drove in that time frame because by the time I was 25 and old enough to be on the rental car, we had cell phones that worked internationally and we had, you know, Google Maps and stuff like that. But but I do remember being navigator a lot back in the day when you printed out your instructions. Yeah. I remember when I started <laughs> driving, navigation was done on this book called The Thomas Guide and you looked up the address uh, in the back of the street where you're going and then it didn't navigate you by any means, but it you had to look page at this to look map. At. Exactly. Yeah. All right, so not this one. The next one. So basically you're going sort of straight, I think. Oh no, all the way around. Yep. All the way around. Okay, good job. I remember my first time driving a stick shift too. I know. Ha, I got you. You say that kind of crap to me all the time <laughs> and I finally got you on one. I don't want to act sound like hit reverse <laughs> since it's in all backwards for you well, no, it's not all oh no i see but the reverse is over on the left yeah. that looks like a cute cafe okay. 
Okay, and then it's immediate right. Obviously, because that's a one-way street there. Oh. <laughs> there is a car up there. <laughs> you're trying not to. You're trying not to hit the guy with the little. Yeah, we'd rather hit a curb kid. That's my defense, right there. <laughs> oh dear God. <sighs> A right hand turn. Yeah, at least watch like, the curb. Yeah. In Denny, I know like what you need to do to manage it. Everything is. It's almost like when driving it, it's like an appendage on of yourself. my body. Yeah. Well, if that's the worst thing that happens, we're doing all right. Let's refrain from saying those things until we park this thing at home. Well, at the Airbnb. I feel like I have some catching up to do for you guys as to like, why did we keep the uh, Airbnb when we've already picked this thing up? So here goes, and it's convoluted, I'll tell you that. We found out a handful of days ago that Denny was going to be late, and they told us that um, originally he was supposed to come in on the 8th, and that we would be able to pick him up on the 11th, because they need a few days for him to clear customs. And you don't go participate in it like you do in the States. They clear it and then you just come to the port and pick it up. When I found that out, I called Indy Campers and I asked them if we could change the dates of our camper rental. And they said, sure, no problem. Well, as is very common, then it took them like five days to get me the new quote for the change dates. And she said, um, all you have to do is pay the difference and I went online and looked and on that day there was no difference It was actually gonna be cheaper Well by the time she got it to me on Friday and today's Sunday for the record <clears throat> It was gonna be 400 euro extra because they had um, Doubled basically the price we paid to take this thing one way so it was 38 euro a day for the rental and then 1990 euro for unlimited mileage because we're driving at 1100 kilometers and they only give you 100 a day and then 1490 a day for insurance and then we had to pay one time fee for lucia of 39 and i paid for an essentials kit which was 49 euro so uh, our total bill was like 732 dollars and uh, when I looked online, it was gonna be like 650 because I just redid the reservation, right? So it took her till Friday to get it to me. And by then it was 400 euros more for the one way fee. Oh, that's the other thing. Uh, we paid 150 euros to go one way from Milan to Belgium. And why are we renting a camper? <clears throat> yeah, a that's true. So car rentals, as most of you probably know, because of COVID are extremely expensive. So our original plan was just to rent a car and we'd get a couple of hotels. It's only 600 miles. Well, the rental cars were between two and $400 a day. So for a two day rental to get us up there, if we drove like bats out of hell, was as much as this car, as this whole van. And then we have a place to stay and we have place to eat because we're still really not into eating in restaurants inside again and it's gonna get pretty cold the further north we go. So this way we can eat in the in the truck. You also save money. You do, you save a lot of money by not eating out. We could take all of our food that we've collected here with us, with us to restock the truck that we just emptied of all of our food components because we had to do that in order to ship it. So it just made sense on lots of levels. It was the cost of renting a car, and then we still had to pay for hotels and all of that on top of it, um, was the same as just renting this caravan. And keep in mind, hotels also don't necessarily have elevators, and we have- All of our crap. Uh, we have all, all of our crap, because not all of it could ride in Denny, Denny across the pond. Mm -mm. Fast forward back here to Friday, two days ago, and I find out I've already made arrangements with our Airbnb to stay five extra nights, and they gave us two nights for free, and we were paying for three, so I've already inconvenienced them and had them close their books for those five days, and then I find out 400 euros, and on principle alone, I was just like, 
no. <laughs> and so we decided to go ahead and pick it up today. And then in Belgium, when we drop this thing off in four days, four nights, we have it for four nights. So we'll drop this off on Thursday this week. I found a little apartment hotel in Brussels to stay at. And when we had originally planned on being able to pick the truck up on the 11th, we were going to go in the camper van out to the port, pick up the truck, put our stuff in the truck, follow each other into Brussels, drop this thing off and go. That was the plan. Well, now we have to drop this thing off and wait a week to pick up the truck. And that's <laughs> if it, if it shows up on time because now anymore. it might be delayed even more because now we can't pick it up until the 18th. Uh, that's why we're doing this whole convoluted thing because I'd already reserved all these extra nights with the Airbnb and we couldn't pick this thing up until 3.30 today. And I, it was like, okay, so now it's dark. Like we just picked it up and you can see like it's getting dark. Why start our drive now? We don't want telepaths. You should go over to that one, I think. With the far left one? Yeah, because that one says telepaths. We don't have that. Just to be safe. All right. Learning experiences. All day long. Teachable every moments. Every day. Teachable moments. For the rest of our days on the road now. Where do you push the button? Push the big red button, maybe? Maybe try pushing it longer. Oh, 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 there it is. It was down low. I found it. Okay. Oh. Okay, let me have that so we don't lose it. <clears throat> okay, I was just we were up hot, too high. high yeah. What do you think? All right. What is it? Not this one. It go, goes no, off no, that. No, no, there's one. <sighs> okay, I see what you're doing. Good catch. It's really pretty here with the leaves changing. And it's really chilled, gotten much chillier in the last, since last weekend. Well, when uh, we got here, it was in like the mid 60s as a high. Uh -huh. And now it's in the low 50s as a high. And it's getting down to like 33, 34 at night, almost freezing. <laughs> How are you doing back there, Nugget? She's just laying down back there, chilling. She's an awesome dog. <laughs> She's so cute. You're so cute. There's six gear. I finally can hit six gear. You've wanted to hit six gear for, for five three years. years. Three years, yeah. So another thing about picking this van up, we expected it to be a full tank of gas, and then we'd return it with a full tank of gas. But in actuality, they gave us or left us a quarter of a tank. So now we have to fill it up in the morning, probably before we leave here. Look at the Alps right in front of us. That's so beautiful. We've been able to see them the whole time we've been here across the lake from where we're staying. And they've just got more and more snow on them as we've uh, progressed through the weeks. Uh, cash. See, look, cash over here. We don't want to do a card. Looks like you just pay a human, maybe, or... Well, no. Nobody's in there. Mm. Figure it out. Maybe. Oh, good. That's a good point. <laughs> That'll help. Ticket? One euro forty. Grazie. Wow, it just keeps getting prettier the longer we drive. And now I know where we are. That's our grocery store. Wow, this was super yeah. easy. We have been to the pet store a couple times. And it's super nice because it's just like literally right above where we were staying. Styling, look at you. It's adorable. You look like an Italian puppy now. Hmm. So Lucy does tend to get a little cold and we forgot her clothing, her outer wear, and it's in Denny, the camper. So 
we have to buy something because it is getting a little chilly and it's not fair to her. Yep. And grandma insisted, you just get my little grand dog a, some clothing. We stopped at the grocery store and got a ready-made meal to have for this evening since we are getting home so late. So we have a... Um, rotisserie chicken. Yep, rotisserie chicken. I was hungry when I went to the store, so... <laughs> a risotto. This one has fungi in it, which is uh, mushrooms. We know what fungi is. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. This is a little salad that I'd been wanting to try the whole time we've been here and I never got it, but it's a seafood salad and it has shrimp and calamari and I'm not sure, it looks like octopus. So I cut up a tomato, we have some bread and there's cauliflower. I got us a small bottle of wine because I didn't think we could probably finish it tonight. So we have a little wine. I already corked it so it's breathing. Uh, don't beat them on. We have finished off plenty of bottles of wine in one. Okay, meal. well, your stomach was upset last night. I wasn't sure if you would uh, drink any, and I can finish that by myself. <laughs> That's I'm, the real reason. I know you can. <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with that. We're gonna eat some dinner and we'll see you in the morning. It'll be time to get on the road and get this party started. Good night.